Good morning, congregation. Welcome to this morning's worship. It's good to meet you in your homes or in your bedrooms or in your gardens, wherever you are sitting this morning as we gather to worship the Lord. Our call to worship comes from Psalm 107, reading from verse 22 to 31. Let them sacrifice, thank offerings, and tell of his works with songs of joy. Some went out on the sea in ships. They were merchants on the mighty waters. They saw the works of the Lord, how wonderful deeds, his wonderful deeds in the deep. For he spoke and stirred up a tempest that lifted high the waves. They mounted up to the heavens and went down to the depths. In their peril, their courage melted away. They reeled and staggered like drunkards. They were at their wit's end. Then they cried out to the Lord in their trouble, and he brought them out of their distress. He stilled the storm to a whisper. The waves of the sea were hushed. They were glad when it grew calm, and he guided them to their desired haven. Let them give thanks to the Lord for his unfailing love and his wonderful deeds for mankind. And so that's a wonderful reminder that God is with us, He protects us, and He walks with us. So let us pray. Gracious God, we bless you. Thank you for being the King of glory. Thank you for being our Father, Redeemer, Shepherd, and King. Thank you for reconciling us back to you through your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. We are thankful to you for the Holy Spirit, who is the promised advocate, who empowers us to be effective witnesses to your kingdom here on earth. Thank you for loving us and watching over us. Lord, let all that we are praise you. We will praise you as long as we live. We will sing your praises with our dying breath. Our hope is in you, the Lord our God. You created heaven and earth, the sea and everything in them. You keep every promise forever. We stand amazed at your, how awesome you are. Praise your name. But most ho holy and merciful God, we confess to you and to one another that we have sinned against you by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart and mind and strength. We have not fully loved our neighbors as ourselves. We have not always had in us the mind of Christ. You alone know how often we have grieved you by wasting your gifts, by wandering from your ways. Forgive us, we pray, most merciful Father, and free us from our sin. Renew in us the grace and strength of your Holy Spirit, for the sake of Jesus Christ, your Son, our Saviour. Amen. We have two readings this morning. The first one is from Exodus chapter 16. Exodus chapter 16. And we're reading from verse 1 to 8. Exodus chapter 16, verse 1 to 8. And then 13 to 20. This is the word of the Lord. The whole Israelite community set out from Elam and came to the desert of Sin, which is between Elam and Sinai, on the 15th day of the second month, after they had come out of Egypt. In the desert, the whole community grumbled against Moses and Aaron. The Israelites said to them, if only we had died by the Lord's hand in Egypt. There we sat around pots of meat and ate all the food we wanted. But you have brought us out into this, into this desert to starve this entire assembly to death. Then the Lord said to Moses, I will rain down bread from heaven for you. The people are to go out each day and gather enough for that day. In this way I will test them and see whether they will follow my instructions. On the sixth day, they are to prepare what they bring in, and that is to be twice as much 
as they gather on the other days. So Moses and Aaron said to all the Israelites, In the evening you will know that it was the Lord who brought you out of Egypt. And in the morning you will see the glory of the Lord, because he had heard your grumbling against him. Who are we that you should grumble against us? Moses also said, You will know that it was the Lord when he gives you meat to eat in the evening and all the bread you want in the morning, because he has heard your grumbling against him. Who are we? You are not grumbling against us, but against the Lord. And then verse 13, That evening quail came and covered the camp, and in the morning there was a layer of dew around the camp. When the dew was gone, Thin flakes like frost on the ground appeared on the desert floor. When the Israelites saw it, they said to each other, What is it? For they did not know what it was. Then Moses said to them, It is the bread that the Lord has given you to eat. This is what the Lord has commanded. Everyone is to gather as much as they need. Take an omer for each person you have in your tent. The Israelites did as they were told. Some gathered much. Some little. And when they measured it out by the omer, the one who had gathered much did not have too much, and the one who had gathered little did not have too little. Everyone had gathered just as much as they needed. Then Moses said to them, No one is to keep any of it until morning. However, some of them paid no attention to Moses. They kept part of it until morning but it was full of maggots and began to smell. So Moses was angry with them. And then our gospel reading is from Matthew chapter 6. Matthew chapter 6, reading from verse 25. Matthew chapter 26, reading from verse 25. Therefore I tell you, do not worry about your life, what you will eat or drink, or about your body, what you will wear. Is not your life more than food, and your body more than clothes? Look at the birds of the air. They do not sow or reap or store away in barns, and yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you mu not much more valuable than they? Can any one of you by worrying add a single hour to your life? And why do you worry about clothes? See how the flowers of the field grow. They do not labor or spin. Yet I tell you, not even Solomon in his splendor was dressed like one of these. If that is how God clothes the grass of the field, which is here today and tomorrow, is thrown into the fire, will he not much more clothe you, you of little faith? So do not worry, saying, What shall we eat? Or what shall we drink? Or what shall we wear? For the pagans run after all these things, and your heavenly Father knows that you need them. But seek first his kingdom and his righteousness, and all these things will be given to you as well. Therefore do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will worry about itself. Each day has enough trouble of its own. This is the gospel of Christ. So I normally take an opportunity during the year to tell the church about what happens in that little office at the back there that's behind the glass window. Looks like the McDonald's drive through You may or may not know, but that is the office of Mission to Seafarers Africa region. For those of you who have not heard about Mission to Seafarers, and perhaps for those who have heard but you've forgotten, let me remind you, we are an international organization that cares for the physical and spiritual well-being of seafarers and their families and the many difficult and challenging circumstances they face. The African region consists of centers and chaplains in East Africa, West Africa, South Africa and Namibia. Now, I know most of you are probably overhearing anything about COVID. Um, but to talk about seafarers on this Sea Sunday and the challenging and difficult circumstances they face, then we cannot but include how COVID has affected them. 
Back in February, March, the cruise industry was the first to feel the effect of COVID. All cruise holidays were cancelled and the companies began to recall their vessels. Passengers were disembarked at various ports. But unfortunately, the crew could not get off the vessel unless that ship happened to be sailing in the port of that particular nationality. Of course, crews were also needed to get the ship back to its home base. So some of these crews spent months on board an empty ship waiting to get home. As countries entered lockdown, so more and more seafarers found themselves either stuck on ships or in countries in quarantine. Port authorities began to deny shore leave, which meant that even if you got off your ship, you were not allowed into the port area. International flights were cancelled, which meant, let's say you were a Filipino seafarer, you managed to get off your ship, you wanted to go home, you were in the port, a port in New Zealand, unfortunately international flights had been cancelled and therefore you could not leave New Zealand. The second problem was that even if you managed to get off your ship and secure a flight back to your country, the only way you could leave your vessel was in fact if your replacement arrived at the ship. According to maritime law, a ship has to have a certain complement and so it cannot legally sail if it has less than that complement. So you would have to wait for your replacement. Now again, with inter international flights being restricted, many countries crew could not leave home to join a ship. This meant that not only were seafarers stuck on ships, but in fact they were also stuck on, at home, unable to earn an income. Nine to 12 month contracts became 14 to 16 month con contracts. There's a story of a seafarer from the Philippines. He has not been home for six months. It has been 18 months since he joined his vessel. He has not seen his wife and son for even longer. He was supposed to leave his vessel in February when his 11 month contract came to an end. There's nothing I can do, says Ralph. I have to leave to God whatever might happen. Lest vessels lying around outside the port have become a common sight. You will see them as you drive down uh, Umschlagerak's drive. But it's not like the shipping industry closed down. Products were still arriving in our country and in other countries, if not a little slower. We did not run out of food. You could still buy the latest phone or the latest electronic gadget. Seafarers continue to work. At present, there's still a move from the International Labour Organization and the International Maritime Organization to have seafarers declared essential workers, which would allow them free movement around the world because they are essential. They're getting goods and products to our shores. Without them, ships could not sail. The situation has improved over the last month and Cape Town and Durban have been declared ports where crew changes can take place. Some countries are allowing international travel once again. There is still, however, an estimated 300,000 seafarers stuck on vessels at sea around the world. Our ministry and the ministry in the region has been affected by the virus. While we have now been allowed to begin ship visiting, these ship visits can only take place on the deck of the vessel. And so sometimes conversations are difficult to have when the weather is bad. Communication has been very difficult for crews. And so these visits have not only brought some relief for 22 people who have often seen the same 
fellow crew members for months on end. But they've also meant ac ac accessibility to communications. Uh, and we provide things such as SIM cards, data, and even Wi-Fi accessibility. As no seafarers have been allowed shore leave, our centers around the region have not been able to trade. The good news is that last month lockdown was lifted in West Africa and East Africa. And so these centers are open f for local folk. I just had a message from, in fact, the chaplain in Mombasa who says that seafarers have begun to visit the center this week. Although seafarers are still not able to come in some places, a lot of revenue has therefore been lost. We have started an online shipping system in order to supply seafarers with essential items. And often these essential items are as basic as shampoo, soap, toothpaste, and of course airtime. Most of you remember Reverend Samuel, the chaplain in Monrovia. I might have shared the story with a few people, but he disappeared a month ago. When he finally made contact with me, he explained that he and a family member had been suspected of having COVID. They were moved away immediately from their home to a military hospital. Their phones taken away from them, and they remained in quarantine without any contact with the outside world for a month. Very different to what happens perhaps in our country. These story and other stories regarding seafarers got me thinking about the impact of COVID-19 on my life and the life of others. In fact, it's not just COVID-19, but often the difficulties and the struggles that we find ourselves in. What is the impact of those? If I must be often, must be honest, I often complain, I moan and tell everybody who wants to li listen that life is unfair, that I deserve better, and that perhaps even as a Christian, these things should not be happening to me. Well, as we turn to our two passages this morning, we see that in the story in Exodus, the people of Israel have just been rescued from slavery. They are free, and they're heading for the promised land. The writer, however, tells us that on the 15th day of the second month of freedom, they began to moan and complain. We want to go back to Egypt. We had pots of meat. Must have been South Africans in that group as well. All the food we wanted. It took them two months to forget about the Almighty God who had saved them, protected them, and rescued them. And this is the amazing thing, that God in His love and mercy does not react as we would. You know, get to your room, you ungrateful child. He once again listens to the plight and the cries of His people, and He reaches out and He saves them. The writer in Matthew reminds us that we have a Father who cares for us. We need to trust that He will continue to do that as He has done before. He reminds us to focus on what is important. Doing the right thing in the midst of stress. That's my understanding of righteousness. Doing the right thing in the midst of strength, strength, stress and hardship. And to continue to ensure that we place God first. That is my understanding of seeking His kingdom. The kingdom of God is any place where God reigns, where we put God first. And so that's what the writer is saying. Do what is right and put God in His right place. There is always somebody who is in a worse position than we are. Somebody suffering more than we. Somebody in more pain than we are. The seafarers reminded me of that during the last couple of months. And in fact, as we look around our community, there are people that are suffering more than we are. There are people that have cancer. There are people that have lost loved ones and perhaps could not attend funerals, who could not visit them in hospital because of COVID. 
19. Their people have lost income and are not sure of the, in- the future of their, jump, their jobs or their businesses. We are reminded this morning that as we cry out to God, He will hear us and He will provide exactly what we need. I always find that part of the Exodus story uh, quite amazing. Some gathered a lot, some gathered a little, but everybody had enough. Everybody had enough. But notice, the Israelites had to trust God that in fact the next day the quail and the manna would be there. That God would show up again with meat and bread. Whatever our challenges are, you and I will face in the coming days and months. Let us remember that there is somebody else who is struggling with a similar situation or perhaps even worse hardships than we are. Let us remember that we have exactly what we need. And let us focus on what we have and rather, rather than what, on what we do not have. And let us trust God because we are reminded this morning that He will provide us with everything that we need. Amen. Let us pray. Be with seafarers, Lord, on all their voyages to cheer them up and keep them safe in all dangers. Let nothing afloat or on shore cut them off from you. May they please you in everything they do. Bless all on board their ship, whatever their responsibility. Enable everyone to do their duty. Help them to be good shipmates and bring them again safely to their homes and to those who long for their return. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And now by the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the fellowship of His Holy Spirit, Go with us now and forevermore. Amen.